Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. We are here with the E36 drift car. We just replaced everything in the rear end of this car so it's super solid now. I got in a crash in this car and I haven't actually given it a real alignment yet. Um, I just tow plate alignment at the track. So let's go take a look. Oh, I forgot to mention what we're doing. Today we are gonna be doing and setting up our at home alignment setup in our garage so that we can always do our own alignments and make adjustments uh, without taking this thing to a shop. So let's take a look at what I got going on here. So as you can see right now, the car is on pavers. These are 12 by 12, just regular concrete pavers. Um, they're pretty cheap. They're about $6 each Canadian. So it's even cheaper in the US most likely. You don't have to do this obviously, but it's gonna allow you to get under your car and adjust all your tie rods and camera arms and all that stuff. So. I went ahead and jacked this up and took my hubcaps off. That's kind of the baseline of what I have to do here. Now, I suggest just jacking the car up um, one side of the time and putting the pavers in and not front to rear because that way your car will uh, roll back and forth. If you do it that way, just do it side to side. This isn't gonna help at this point with just the pavers because the tires are gonna stick to the pavers and they're not gonna be able to move. So my solution for that is these. These are dollar store um, cutting boards. They were like $1.25 each. I got eight of them and we got some grease. And we're gonna basically be putting grease in between two of these and then putting them under each wheel. But the reason I didn't do it yet is just because um, I didn't wanna have grease and slippy uh, plates under my wheels when I jacked up the other side and the car just slides off. So I put them on the pavers first and I'm gonna jack up each wheel separately and put the uh, turn plates in like that. Now you could do this with real turn plates. That would probably be better. I mean, I can't imagine it being better. Obviously this is the way to go, but we also got jack stands and we have some half inch uh, electrical conduit that I'm probably gonna have to cut down to size. Uh, but the gist of it is we'll put a jack stand at each corner of the car, just in front of it um, and off to the side a bit. So we'll probably put a jack stand here and here and then run our conduit along it in a straight line. Same thing in the back. I forgot one of the most important things here is the string and also a good ruler. I like, I'm gonna use this one because it has the capability of doing millimeters so I can get a finer adjustment. This is the general idea. I haven't put the string on that side yet, but as you can see, once we get this squared off of, this is the string we're gonna be taking our measurements from. Um, I haven't put these uh, turn plates in yet either. Here's an example of why I haven't put the turn plates in. That being said, I have gone ahead and installed an anchor in my wall so that, and I took my front bumper off to for room and because I'm going to be able to put a ratchet strap just loosely to my car so that when I have the turn plates on there it doesn't just want to slide off because my turn plates are going to work so good that it's going to want to do that so that is my safety plan there just so that my car doesn't just slide backwards off of my turn plates so anchor in the wall in a stud obviously it's just going to be holding the car stagnant it's not going to obviously be holding the whole car isn't gonna want to actually forcefully go off of here. So it shouldn't rip my wall down, I'm hoping. Oh, I'm just gonna dial back some camber. I'm gonna get my baseline measurement using my iPhone, which is I'm filming with, so I can't film that. But I have an angle finder on my iPhone and I'm just gonna put uh, a flat piece of metal or whatever I can find onto the wheel and then put my angle finder on my iPhone on there and just get a baseline of where my angle is at for camber on the front wheels. And then we'll go ahead and take the boots off of my steering rack and measure them um, center, lock to lock, and make sure that we're centered on the rack. We don't care about the steering wheel, what it looks like. If it's turned, once we're done our alignment, we'll move the steering wheel to where it should be. So here we are with the car all jacked up. I now have my rack centered and my wheel is crooked. Now I do remember my wheel being crooked last time I drove it um, in a straight line. So that is normal, obviously. 
but now that the rack is centered, basically all I had to do was measure each side to make sure they're even. This point to the inner of the nut on both sides, got them to be even, so that means my rack is centered. Now I'm also going to test lock to lock, and I'm just going to go all the way over both sides to make sure I'm getting equal amounts of steering angle. Car's at full lock. As you can see, um, I have stock steering angle. Just kidding. I have an E-Factory angle kit. And uh, I'm just checking everything, making sure I got clearance. We're ready to put our turn plates in. Finished product here. So I, I did put quite a bit of grease in here just because I wanted to cover the whole surface area and not have any weird spots where it, it can hang up. So we got the car jacked up and we're just gonna see how well this works. I can actually push the car because I have the turn plate on the other one as well. I can move the car. So they're definitely working. So that's awesome. Pretty stoked that that is a thing. I do have it strapped down because obviously if I can move the car by hand, it can probably just slide off by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of them in and then we can start setting up our strings. So I'm gonna have to be super careful when I'm actually adjusting this. Um, just so that I don't end up pushing the car over one way or another, which could be a problem. So I think I'm gonna loosen all of the things I need to loosen in order to adjust it, like uh, just a little bit so that I don't have to go ahead and like actually fully break something loose because then I have a feeling that I can move the car that way. I can always reset the car with my measurements, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, we now have our rear camera arms loosened up. I'm not gonna lie, one of them was seized. I had to take it out and remove and basically lube it all up again. Anyways, both our camera arms are loose and ready to adjust. Our trailing arm bolts are snug and ready to adjust. And our tie rods, uh, lock nuts are loose and ready to adjust. So now I can go ahead and set up my bars. So we got the setup complete. We haven't measured anything yet but I know that this bar is the exact same length as that bar overall. And I measured 20 inches in, marked it, and cut a little slit so my string sits in it. Same thing on there, 20 inches in, marked it, put a slit in it, and the exact same thing in here. So these bars are both the same length, front to back, and they both are marked 20 inches in so that our strings are the exact same spot. So. Your jack placement isn't super crucial. I did measure off my doors and and the walls to make sure that they're like at least close. Um, but now comes time to measure the distance from the hub on the front and the other side. So you do want your string to be at the center hub height, which mine is. And same with the rear like so. So this kind of messed with my mind a little bit last night when I was thinking about it. I know that there's no way that the track width hub to hub is the exact same on the front as it is the rear. Um, just the geometry of cars in general, generally they're going to make the rear slightly wider. And I looked it up and it, it looks like on a stock E36, um, it's about 13 millimeters wider track in the rear than it is the front. Um, and it got me really thinking like, what, well, how am I supposed to make this work then? How do I measure it? Well, it doesn't really matter that the track width is a little bit wider in the rear than it is the front. The reason that doesn't matter is let's just do an example here. So let's just say from the, the center hub here, we're sitting at around, um, 200 millimeters. So we don't we're not gonna expect to find 200 millimeters in the back because it's a different track width. And I'm not going off of my wheels because I'm running spacers. So I'm going off of the hubs, which is gonna be in a generally stock location, uh, aside from the fact that I have angle kit and extended um, rods and arms. Um, what matters is 
that on the front axle we have the same exact measurement here and on the back axles we have the same exact measurement here it's going to be different from the front than it is the back but as long as our strings are in the exact same spot on the bar front and rear then it's going to be square so i kind of thought about this really hard last night and i was like well is this even worth trying because it's, it's even if it's a little bit off it's it's not going to work so that's what I came to the conclusion was yes it will work as long as it's going to take me a while to set this up because it's the first time I've done it on this car so once I get my baseline measurement for this car then it's not going to be a problem later on because I can write them down because once I move this and measure it and go okay I get this, that side the same and then I go and I get the rears the same then I go back here and this is going to change so I'm just going to have to keep going around the car until I get my measurements perfect and then I can write them down for this car and next time I go to do this setup will be a lot faster. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my measurement and then I go to the other side and get my measurement and then I'm going to cut that in half and when I cut that in half to split the difference I'm just going to be moving the whole bar not the strings because they're set where they need to be so don't touch the strings just move the whole bar and that's what keeps your whole thing square. And I almost forgot a very crucial step. I went ahead and I centered my rack again, just did a measurement and centered it perfectly, and then went in and strapped my wheel down to my seat there so that it can't move uh, easily at least. Obviously it has a little bit of play, but it's good enough. And then after I did that, I went ahead and checked it again and we're good to go. Okay, I have my strings all set up. My front gap, I'm measuring from the edge of this axle, is 193 millimeters. I have that exactly the same on both sides now. And on the back, I'm measuring from the center of the flat part of my axle here. And we have 261 and a half millimeters on both sides exactly. So, we are now perfectly dialed in. Now, you gotta be so careful at this point not to bump any of this stuff or move the car in any way. Just be super gentle when you're adjusting things and measuring and moving. These are super annoying because you have to go side to side and allow me to demonstrate on how to get over these properly. Now I'm gonna get a baseline of where my toe's at. I'm gonna start with the front. 102. And whenever you touch the line, you gotta let it settle again. And this is at 76. So that's way off. Since I, I uh, straightened my wheel or centered my rack, the car is actually just turning to the right a little bit with the rack centered. So that's why it thinks I have a lot of toe in right now. So now I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to write this down and do the math and all that just to make it clear. But this side's gonna have toe out obviously, you can even see it. We're at 70, just about 80. And 105. So. This is where I come in and start adjusting my tie rods and then we'll adjust the camber after and then we'll check everything else again and then I'm going to move on to the rear. So I got my baseline measurements now of how the car sits right now before I do anything at all and that's with the steering wheel straight and all that fun stuff. So we have our front left that has negative 8 degrees of camber. Now I'm not sure how accurate my phone is for this, I would love to get an actual wheel camber um, level but for now we're just going off of our phone's um, angle gauge and then right is roughly negative seven degrees and then we have um, on the left side we have 26 mil of toe in and right is 24 mil of toe out so the car is turning to the right a little bit right now now for rear we have nine mils of toe out and 14 mils of toe out 
and zero camber. So we do want zero camber. I may do negative half degree, negative a degree. We'll see after we get our toe adjusted what that's looking like and hopefully we can get all our crispy numbers that we'd like to get here. So my goal is, and the only thing I'm not adjusting right now is gonna be my caster because um, I know I have enough caster. My car self steers fine. I don't, I didn't, I don't have the setup um, to do caster right now. So I'm not gonna worry about caster. Um, my main worries are gonna be toe and camber um, for this alignment in the front and the rear. So my goal for the front is to have one eighth of toe out and one eighth of toe out is going to be three millimeters overall so i'm going to have to have plus 1.5 mil plus 1.5 mil and that'll give me um, three millimeters overall of toe out and then i want to have negative five degrees of camber just to pull it back a bit and not be so slanty boyd and for the rear i'm going to go ahead and go with uh, a quarter inch of toe in and so that's going to be negative three mils on each side will give me negative six mils which is roughly a quarter inch so we'll have some toe in for extra grip and then camber zero to negative one degree of camber and then this car is going to be nice and gripped up So far, I've gone ahead and just set my toe to zero on both sides, and so on this side I have 89 millimeters. Um, boom, right there, boom, right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the camera that I want, and then I go back and check my toe. And if I get everything I want, I'm gonna tighten down the front end, double check it, and then that's done. And then we can move on to the rear end. And to adjust camber on my car, I'm gonna be adjusting my camber plate here. So there's a couple different places I can actually put these screws to get more or less camber and move this top hat back and forth um, to get the camber setting that I want. Okay, we got our camber now set. The most I could get out of this side was negative six degrees camber. That's as far as I can go with, uh, with these. It's fully maxed out. Now, I know I did this right because since my car has been hit on this side more than one time, this side isn't the same. So that makes sense. So this is at negative six, and this is also at negative six now. One thing that did happen, and this is the annoying part about this procedure. When I loosened these to adjust it, um, as soon as it got loose, I wasn't even thinking about it. Since it's on the camera plates, or sorry, since it's on the turn plates, it just slammed and it just boom, hit went really fast and and then I did a measurement on my square again and moved the car a little bit. So I had to reset my measurements all the way around the car and then I also set my camber to where I wanted and then I reset it again because it changed a little bit when the camera changed. So that's something you're gonna have to keep in mind pretty much every time you set a measurement. So my camber is gonna stay there. That's as much as I can do with it right now. Um, I'm going to double check my toe. Once that's done, I'm going to double check my square before I move on to the rear. Set my toe in the rear and then do it all over again. So I'm actually going to, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to set toe and then camber. I can't remember. I'm going to look that up before I go ahead and do it. But um, I did set toe and then camber and I'm going to go check toe again on here and make sure it's all good. So I think I've achieved my goal in the front. We got our camber at, at about uh, negative six degrees. And then here we have 186 and a half and 185. So that's one and a half degrees, or sorry, one and a half millimeters of toe out. And on this side, we're at 185, 186 and a half. So we got our toe perfect in the front of where exactly we wanted it. So let's give it a shot like that. Lock her down, I'm gonna double check it, and then we're gonna move on to the rear. Okay, we've gone ahead and tightened that down, double checked it, we're locked in. 
at a quarter inch toe out in the front so that's looking really nice now we went and checked her square on each hub again adjusted it accordingly it's only ever out by like a millimeter or two but I just want it to be worth doing this anyways so I readjusted that or square again now I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, messing around with the toe on this car and uh, see where we're at okay so I've maxed out my trailing arm adjustment and I still have a little bit of toe out by five millimeters of toe out so I don't want any toe out at all so Let's see what I can do. I'm gonna try adjusting the camber to see if I can get less camber and see where that puts me. So I fully adjusted my trailing arm to have toe in and I still have that uh, toe out. And then I pulled some more camber out of it and I still have toe out. So I am gonna go ahead and drop my trailing arm and um, swap my offset bushing and it's super easy to do I have the NERP tech um, offset mono ball so I just have to drop the trailing arm take the bracket off pull the the shim um, I don't even know what you call them pull the little offset pieces out and just put them on the other side and put it back together put it back in and then I'm gonna have to obviously re-square the car all over again and then I should be able to get some toe in on this side um, I'm gonna check the other side too Obviously, um, it could it could have changed. Like this car has been crashed a couple times. Nothing like super super bad, but like a couple decent hits. So I don't know what the other side looks like yet. I'll go check the other side. If I have to do it, I'll do them both at the same time, just so I don't have to square it up again after I check it. So let's go ahead and get that all figured out. I went ahead and swapped my trailing arm bushings uh, around so the offset gave me more toe in and I've got everything all like maxed out toe in as I can. I do have stock trailing arm brackets, They're, I haven't drilled them out or anything, I just left them. You can get, you can drill them out to get more toe in or you could uh, actually buy ones that are modified more to get more toe in but at this point I know I've been driving this car with toe out for sure because there's no way I would have had anywhere near a good alignment with the setup I had before but right now I have zero toe so I'm gonna start with that I'm gonna try it like this zero toe zero camber that's pretty damn good for um, an M52 I should have enough grip with that setup and then I got my front dialed in I checked it a few times it's all good so this is me doing my own alignments at home here. Now it was quite time consuming, so this isn't for everybody. This is for people like me who just straight up just wanna do everything themselves. Like I, I couldn't be bothered to take this to the shop and drive it there and get someone else to do it and not actually really know what they did. Um, I do know a couple people that do alignments, but everyone's super busy right now. It's peak drift season, like, or peak about to be drift season, so everyone wants their car aligned. So I'm like, well, I'm just gonna do it myself and try it and see and get it dialed in and I can see the millimeters and, and the angles and stuff and, and uh, learn. So, <laughs> and then maybe it'll inspire someone else to do it themselves because this whole setup to do this cost me, um, I wanna say it was about 80, the pavers were $6 each, I got 12, so that was roughly 70, Five dollars for just the pavers to get it off the ground you don't have to do that but it does make it a lot easier um, and then let's just say this is just over a hundred dollars Canadian to set up your own if you have the jack stands already which I'm assuming you would already have jack stands um, the conduit was $15 per rod so yeah like $120 
to do your own alignment at home and I'd say at least half a day to do it if not longer just if you want to get it perfect so um, it does you do have to keep going around and double checking your square making sure that's all good or else it could be out a little bit and then your alignment is pretty much not gonna be what you think it is it's probably gonna be close but not gonna be perfect once I get everything locked up locked down again tightened up I'm gonna go ahead and double check everything one more time and then I know everything is good to go for my alignment and the last thing I need to do is go in and straighten my steering wheel out to uh, be centered so that when I'm driving it'll hopefully be my line will be up and down and not crooked that's always a nice little bonus when you're driving a car that your steering wheel is straight so I'm gonna do that last thing I still have a few more things to do to this car to get it ready for drifting uh, I got some stainless steel extended brake lines to put in and then I have to bleed all that um, I need to raise my seat and uh, I need to get I have some fender flares to put on it because I can't make the ones I used to make anymore because I don't have the tools like I did at the other shop so I have some fender flares to put on and then I have my own setup to start painting stuff so stay tuned guys for lots more videos coming up if you like the video and it helped you at all or it was just interesting to you please drop a like uh, comment below and subscribe to the channel and that's gonna be all for today's video we'll catch you next time